connecting to cloud. Okay, so hi everybody. I'm really, really happy to have our first Open Infrastructure Foundation uh, Israel meetup. Um, we have uh, two fantastic uh, speakers today who will introduce themselves. Um, I'm really, really excited. And uh, James, the stage is yours. Uh, thank you. Yeah, so um, uh, my name is James Blair. Um, I founded the Zool project, which um, just at a very high level view, it's think of it like a CI system, but I'm going to tell you why it's different from other CI systems uh, in a few minutes. Um, <clears throat> Zool came out of the OpenStack project. Uh, which, of course, is the founding project from the Open Infrastructure Foundation. So um, as I talk about it, um, you might get a little history of, uh, of uh, OpenStack as well and, and sort of visibility into multiple activities of the, the open infrastructure community. So um, this is also a meetup. Um, not just a, a, a presentation. So, um, you know, I, I have some slides to kind of uh, start this discussion off, um, but I would absolutely love it if uh, people here would interrupt me during the talk, uh, or I might pause uh, occasionally, um, you know, ask questions. Let's, uh, let's uh, see if we can get a discussion going too. So, you know, um, if something piques your interest, um, Feel free to share why it's interesting to you. Uh, you know, ask questions about it, and 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 um, uh, don't don't make me talk the whole time. So, uh, uh, without further ado, I'm going to uh, share the screen here, and let's see. We'll go over here. All right. So I I think I think you should have my slides full screen now, right? Yeah. OK. Um, the thing about this, though, is uh, I can't actually see any uh, anything else uh, now that they're full screen. So um, uh, if, if anybody like raises their hand or asks something in chat or something, I won't know it. So uh, if you do want to interrupt me, please literally just interrupt me and start talking, because um, otherwise I, I won't know what else is going on. So uh, I'm going to talk about uh, project gating with Zool. Um, uh, my, I've introduced myself already, of course. Um, I, uh, in addition to starting the, the Zool project, I have started a company called Acme Gating, um, which focuses on supporting uh, Zool and uh, supporting companies using Zool, helping them scale it, doing custom development and deployment and, and things like that. So uh, this is really a, a, a full-time thing for me. I, I eat and breathe uh, Zool all day long. Um, so Zool is a project gating system that was developed originally for OpenStack. And a minute ago, I said it's like a CI system. Um, that's that's kind of the box that it fits into. But it does things a little bit differently, where, where we're really focused on uh, complete testing and correct testing of, of, of projects and I'll, I'll explain more about why why gate why I think gating is different than CI uh, in a little bit so it was originally developed just for OpenStack um, and uh, over the past uh, several years um, it's been used by more and more other companies to the point that we um, um, I, I think maybe new features going into Zool now are more driven externally than they are from OpenStack, and that's a that's a reversal from from where we started. So uh, it's actually really great to see um, more more companies using it, uh, and uh, and the project sort of growing based on those needs, uh, and not just from OpenStack. Um, so why is Zool interesting? Um, it is a completely Git-driven uh, CI, uh, and it's actually CI and CD, both all, all in one, uh, CI and CD system. Um, that, was, that was pretty novel 12 years ago when we started it. Um, uh, I think most new CI systems are Git-driven now. Um, I, I think, I don't know, a, a number of, 
we did a number of things very early on that were that were different that are commonplace now. To the, I, I don't know to what extent um, we've sort of inspired those in other products. Um, I, I think to some extent that is the case. Um, we'll never really know for sure. Nobody comes out and says, oh, well, we did this uh, because we saw it in Zool. But we've been talking about this for, for this whole time and, and sharing ideas. So um, anyway, it's completely Git-driven, uh, which is really great for um, uh, uh, integration with uh, and, and sort of developer access to the project. Um, I'll talk about that more in a minute. Uh, it has a... Uh, uh, a really flexible model of centralized and decentralized control. Um, it supports cross-project collaboration. Um, and then it's, it's sort of um, main feature is what we call speculative execution and, and gating. And these two things are very much tied into each other. I'm going to drill down into, into each of these topics. Um, so why did we make it Git-driven? Um, we wanted to make sure that that uh, it, it, it basically came out of, as we were developing OpenStack, uh, we wanted to add new tests, new kinds of jobs, um, and we wanted to do that as, as, as we went. And by making the system get driven, we could actually, we, we could make, um, for example, a single commit that adds, uh, a new feature in the software, as well as a new job to test it. Um, you're not, of course, always adding new jobs every time you add a new commit. Um, but uh, but being able to keep the test infrastructure completely synchronized with the system that it was testing um, was huge. And, uh, and admit that the developers working on the individual OpenStack projects could like they had some agency over the CI system. It wasn't just, oh, oh, go and ask the QA team to go add a new job. Um, it meant that they were they were responsible for um, maintaining their own test infrastructure for their own projects. Um, so it it was um, it's really empowering for for developers to to have that kind of flexibility. Um, there's. And, and and this this feature definitely came out of uh, I, I think a fairly what we thought was was a really unique aspect of OpenStack at the time and and that is that uh, OpenStack is this collection of 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 different projects right you've got um, the 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 cloud compute engine is called Nova the um, the volume management is called Glance uh, these are these are actually different projects. Um, with different teams working on them, and and there's many many different uh, OpenStack projects now, uh, all all fairly independent, and um, we kind of needed them to to work together at the end of the day. So there's this mixture of well, projects have a certain amount of autonomy, and they they need to be able to to manage their own tests, add their own test jobs, things like that. But also, all of the OpenStack projects should should behave the same way, uh, follow the same conventions, and uh, be tested and work together. So we, we set this up so that um, we could sort of centrally uh, make some, some decisions, like everybody has to run documentation jobs, and they all have to use the same documentation system, right? Um, but then individual projects can add their own functional test jobs to, to to test what's unique to them. So there's this mixture of centralized control and local control. And with Zool, you can kind of dial that in wherever you need it. If if your developers um, uh, run everything, then then you can just give them full local control. If uh, if you have some uh, some sort of compliance regulations or something like that that you need to enforce, you can define that centrally and ensure that it runs all the time. So we thought this was pretty unique to, to OpenStack situation, uh, which is why we hadn't seen this in other, any other uh, CI systems out there. Um, and then we quickly realized that actually this describes pretty much the environment in every um, company out there. Um, everybody has this need for both for some mixture of centralized and, and local control. Um, so uh, that was um, 
I, I'm, I'm kind of glad that we put that in to Zool originally. Uh, it's it's been really uh, useful in getting it adopted by by folks outside of OpenStack, as it turns out. Um, Zool is un unlike many of the the more recent CI systems out there. Zool is completely agnostic about where its code lives. Um, OpenStack keeps its source code in the Garrett code review system. Um, and so that was where Zool started. But um, folks have added support for GitHub, GitLab, and Pagir to Zool since then. And uh, Zool can work with any of these systems equally. There's uh, b basically, there's um, they're all first class uh, citizens as far as uh, the, the um, support in Zool goes. And um, moreover, uh, in you can actually combine projects on different code review systems in the same test job. So if, um, say, you have an organization where you use, you know, one part of your organization uses Garrett and another part uses GitLab, um, you can bridge the gap in Zool um, by having a, a, a single job that checks out a repo from GitLab and checks out a repo from Garrett and, and, and builds an application from both of those repos and, and tests them together. So um, uh, not only does Zool support dependencies between different Git projects, it supports them um, across different code review systems, which um, Again, that was uh, something that we found out is very common in uh, in enterprises. Uh, I mean, we all wish that that uh, companies would standardize on a on a single system. It would make things easier for everybody. But um, very frequently, uh, we we find that that there are different parts of different organizations using different software, and so having Zool being able to bridge that gap is very useful. Um, So Zool um, has uh, this feature that we call um, project gating. And to, to sort of what I, to, to explain what, what I think the difference is between gating and other CI systems, um, I like to think of the, the sort of the history of CI as uh, it the, like the first CI system was was Hudson uh, as, as we know it right like that was um, that later became Jenkins right and um, the the CI stands for continuous integration and the idea was that you would sort of continuously build your project and make sure that uh, that everything worked so what would happen is people would merge some changes and then the the daily um, CI build would happen and you'd find out what broke. So essentially what we were doing is we were testing the past um, because these were these were uh, post-merge tests. Um, later on, we sort of gained the ability to um, to test changes before they were merged. Um, you know, you up uh, upload a change to Garrett or, or open a GitHub pull request or something like that. And, and uh, a CI system might run uh, tests on that change and, and tell you if it's good or not. Um, so you're, you're testing the present. You're testing this thing that you just wrote. Um, when what Zool does is a step beyond that. It's actually focused on the future. It's focused on. Um, what will happen if you merge this change that you just wrote? So it doesn't just test the change that you wrote. Uh, it, it first checks out the current state of the repo and, and applies your change on top of it. Um, so so it's, not, it's not even testing the, the commit that you made. It's testing what the result would be if we actually merge that commit. And moreover, because of Zool's support for um, cross-project dependencies, um, uh, if your commit depends on another commit, either in the same repo or, or in a different repo, Zool will, will check those out as well. So what you can do is sort of construct these um, 
this future state um, where where Zool sees, you know, there it might not just be one commit; it might be five, ten, twenty commits um, that all need to merge in in possibly different repositories. And and the question that that it's answering is: if we merge all of those commits, what will the result be? Will it work? Um, and so that's why I think that. Uh, Project gating is distinct from these other types of CI systems in that it is testing the future. So uh, I, I've got a couple of, of, of definitions here because uh, I've been using this word uh, as if everybody knows what it means. Um, and, and so this is what, what the word gating means to me. And that is that every change proposed for a repository is tested uh, before it merges. Zool kind of adds on to that with this idea of co-gating, where uh, if you have different repositories, then changes to a set of repositories merge monotonically, so, so that each change is tested with the current state of all other related repositories before it merges. So this might be um, a, a sequence of changes um, that, that all need to, that are all interdependent. Um, or at least have a, a dependency series between them, a dependency relationship. And, um, and so co-gating is saying that all of these different projects, they're gated together. Uh, they're never going to break each other because you test every change to each of them before they merge. And then finally, um, we have this idea of parallel co-gating. So if you take this idea where, where different projects uh, where we test changes to different projects um, before they merge. Um, what Zool does is it is it does this in a very efficient way, where it tests all of these changes in, in parallel, but still um, treats it as a as a, a series of changes that that like they still they still merge in a defined order. They still merge in the order that that either they've been approved or or the order that their dependency chain implies. Um, but rather than testing them one at a time, uh, we test them all, we start the tests all at once in parallel uh, with the assumption that they're going to merge. Uh, and, um, and if they all do pass, then they merge. So that's getting a little weird and hard to explain with words. So uh, I have kind of this, uh, um, uh, I'm sort of a visual person. So this is uh, a, an illustration of how Zool deals with multiple changes um, and, and runs the, the tests in parallel. So if you, if you think of um, a, a queue of changes that need to merge, um, maybe, maybe a few of them have already merged. We've got two, uh, two changes here at the top of the screen that are already merged. And then somebody approves a change uh, and uh, and Zool starts uh, running tests on that, right? So we, we start a, a series of jobs to, to test this change to see if we're going to merge it. Um, and then somebody else approves another change on, on top of that, and then, uh, and then there's the third change. So we start um, testing all of these changes one after another. Um, when Zool starts, um, do I? No, OK. So when Zool starts this, uh, um, the jobs for for this first new change, um, it it just checks out the state of the repo and and applies that change and starts running jobs. Right when it starts jobs for the second one, uh, it checks out the current state of the repo, applies the first change, then applies the second change, and then starts running jobs and so forth for the, the third change. So by this third change down here. Um, we've it includes the the two changes ahead of it in its tests as well. So then let's say that second change starts failing. Um, clearly at that point, Zool knows that uh, with since the jobs are failing, um, that change isn't going to merge. What do we do now? Um, well, the the change at the head of the queue stays the same. It's fine. The change, uh, the, the second change, the one that's failing now, um, we keep running jobs on it in just to, to, to let them finish in case any other jobs fail, we'll give it as much information back to the, the user as possible. Um, also, there's a possibility that the change ahead still might fail. And, and if it does, we might need to change things again. But, um, but for the moment, we just pull the second change out of the, the queue. We restart the jobs for the third change. And so this change at the bottom of the screen um, 
it, we restart its jobs with the first change and the third change, but not the second one. So um, this is sort of this is how Zool maintains this queue of um, of changes to be merged uh, and runs the test jobs for all of those in parallel. So um, what this lets you do once you combine this idea with cross project uh, gating uh, is you could you could construct a situation where um, you make some changes to a library that your your system uses, right? Um, let's say we've got two library, two changes to, to two different libraries here. Um, and then you change a, you make a change to your front end system, right? Like the, the actual web service that depends on those libraries. Um, by by telling Zool that that your front end change depends on the library change, then your front end will be built with these new libraries. Um, and then, let's say that you make a change to your infrastructure to actually deploy this front end. Um, you can you can write that change saying that you know we're going to deploy this new version depending on this front end change, which depends on these library changes, right? And what Zool can do is rather than having to merge the library changes and then rebuild your front end and then merge your front end change and then re redeploy your infrastructure, what you can do with Zool is have all of these changes um, actually tested end to end in a simulated production environment before any of them merge. So um, this, this is huge for developer productivity um, uh, and, and huge for folks running infrastructure as well. Um, because it means that that uh, you can avoid the situation where you merge something and then you have to revert it or or something like that um, by by um, essentially testing from end to end your your complete application. Um, so uh, we, we actually we've used this a lot in the OpenStack project to to sort of let's say we're making. Um, changes to a, a client API, right? We want to actually show that those client API changes do the job that they're intended to do. You know, there's a there's a commit message that says this this adds a new API that does something, right? Um, well, with Zool, we can prove it. We can say not only are we going to add this new API, we're going to actually um, use it in 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 a consuming application and have a Zool job that shows that. Um, that process working from end to end. And that way, if the API is a little wrong, um, say it doesn't, you know, it, it looked right at first, but when we tried to use it, there was something that didn't quite work right. Uh, you can go back and revise the API before you've even actually committed it to the repository. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm going to skip over this. This is basically just showing you the, the, the same thing again, how how these different um, changes in the queue can come from different projects. Uh, so I think why don't I actually stop here for a second just to, to give folks an opportunity to jump in and, and ask if there's any any questions because I've, I've talked a bit about um, uh, um, you know sort of the 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 a little bit about where Zool came from and project gating and things like that. And I, I kind of want to ask if there are any questions about project gating if, or if if that makes sense. Hello, uh, sorry. Query, please. Yeah, please, sorry. Uh, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, great. Uh, so uh, to my team, like uses Versal for CACD. I'm sorry, Maybe I didn't catch it. Uh, which, which uh, so project? My, my team used Versal. It's a tool for uh, like uh, for CIPD front end apps, I guess. Few of my team members used uh, in few projects. Uh, let me name it. I have just sent it in the chat. So they use this this tool for CICD. Is this similar or different to it, what uh, Zoom works? Um, I am not familiar with Versal. Um, can you can you give me a quick summary, maybe? Uh, it's it's same like it's a uh, like a typical CI CD tool. 
Um, yeah, so uh, I, I think, so without knowing, and, and if anybody else knows the answer to this question, please jump in. But without knowing much about um, uh, Versal, I would, I, I would say in general, the, 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 the key features that distinguish Zool from most other CI CD systems are the cross project dependencies. Um, uh, because a lot of CI CD systems are, are just focused on, on uh, helping developers with a single project. And so once you get more Git repositories involved, um, they, they tend to, they tend to, to fall down a little bit. Um, it's, it's hard to express, it's either hard or impossible to express dependencies between different um, projects. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, and so the um, I think more and more CI systems are are doing something close to gating. Um, most of them aren't doing it quite as sophisticated as as Zool is, um, but certainly I think in general the you know if you go back to my past present future idea. Um, Folks, most uh, CI system CI systems are moving from from testing the present to testing the future. Um, they're again not not doing that quite as much as Zool is, um, but uh, certainly pre merge testing is is the norm now, and um, and some systems are developing a sort of fire and forget gating system where where you might approve a bunch of changes and they go into a queue and and eventually they get merged if, if they pass their tests. So um, Zool is uh, is different than those in that it it does that testing in parallel in a very efficient way. Um, so so I think it's that sort of parallel gating and uh, and cross project dependencies are the 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 things that are that are that really set Zool apart from from most other systems. Um, okay, so I'll uh, I'll jump back to the uh, to my slides now. Oh, and I apparently okay. So um, one of the the one of the so once you sort of set up these things that Zool provides, right, with uh, um, cross project dependencies and gating and things like that, there's there's some emergent behaviors, um, and and one of them is that uh, Zool actually um, a, a lot of I, I've actually talked to a lot of people that that have switched their their entire infrastructure um, or their entire development. Um, uh, um, organizations from having multiple repos to having a mono repo, and they do that because of the CI system they're using. You know, if if they're using a, a CI system that doesn't understand cross project dependencies, and they they have these kinds of tight integrations, then they oftentimes people will say, well, the easiest way to deal with that is to just have a mono repo. That way, you, you know, you can you can test changes to your front end and your back end at the same time if they're both in the same repo. Um, having a mono repo is, you know, that can be a good choice in some situations. Um, other times, uh, it brings a whole lot of other problems with it. I, I think the whether you use a mono repo or not should not be because of your CI system. That that seems like the tail wagging the dog to me. Um, it seems like it should be decided by by the 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 level of integration between the actual components of your system. Um, so with Zool, um, you don't need a mono repo. Zool will work just fine with a mono repo. There are Zool users that use it with a mono repo, but they've elected to do that because it makes sense for their project, um, not because it was a weakness in the CI system. So um, if if your system involves multiple Git repositories um, and you need to test them together, um, you 
don't need a mono repo to do that if you're using Zool. You can just keep these, these components independent and then um, combine them uh, when you run the job in some way. And of course, there's a lot of different ways of combining them. Um, they might be combined with library relationships. So, um, you know, project A uses project B as a library and, and it's incorporated at build time, or it might be over the network. Um, so the, the two components talk to each other over, you know, over TCP and, and you're, um, and you're sort of doing the microservices paradigm. Um, as an example, OpenStack uses uh, both of those. Um, some OpenStack components are built from other OpenStack components as a library, and also different OpenStack components talk to each other um, over web services. So um, in, in OpenStack's own use of Zool, um, we, we see both of those combination methods being used. Uh, a third one, which I, I hesitate to mention because it also opens a can of worms, is, uh, is submodules. There are ways to use submodules um, uh, with Zool, but, uh, and Zool gives you more options than any, any other CI system for using submodules. But anytime you start to use submodules, it's complicated. It's difficult for developers uh, to deal with. It's, it's hard to get right uh, in testing, um, but it is a possibility. Um, Zool has two ways of dealing with dependencies. Um, traditionally, we actually only had uh, linear dependencies, so that um, uh, so that uh, a, a change in project A might depend on project B, and in that case, you'd have to merge the change in project B first before you can merge the change in project A. We said we wrote that. We wrote Zool that way originally for OpenStack because we intended OpenStack to be continuously deployed, um, so that um, uh, you know you might you might upgrade Nova to to the next commit, and then you might upgrade Glance to the next commit after that. Um, and we wanted to make sure that that you could always co upgrade one component. There, like there was always an order that you can upgrade OpenStack components in, uh, and the the system would um, continue to work. So the original dependency implementation in Zool was was written for those linear dependencies. Um, since Zool has become used by more projects other than OpenStack, the the um, the idea of circular dependencies uh, has become more important. Um, and that's because, as an example, um, folks who are manufacturing things in hardware don't have those same restrictions on continuous deployment that, that uh, a web services-based software system has. So uh, if, you're, if you're updating um, the firmware of multiple components in, in say, a vehicle, um, it turns out you can update the firmware on different components uh, at the same time. So you're, you're never running a, um, a situation where the firmware on component A um, has to upgrade first, and then somebody drives the car, and then the upgrade um, component B, uh, and, uh, and then somebody drives the car again for a little while. Um, usually the upgrade cycle is you upgrade uh, component A and B at the same time. So um, so we've added support for circular dependencies so that tests uh, we, we can test different changes to different projects uh, together at the same time. Uh, and uh, and then Zool will either merge all of the changes in the set or none of them. So um, this, is, this has actually been an area of, of uh, a lot of recent work. Um, we've, in addition to doing that, we've made things a lot more efficient where if, if um, multiple changes in this dependency cycle are are running the same jobs, then we'll actually deduplicate those jobs so that uh, things are, are more efficient for, for, um, for users. Um, this also ties uh, neatly into a feature in, that's, that is unique to Garrett, um, which is Garrett also understands the idea of simultaneous dependencies. So um, not only can, if you're using Zool with Garrett, not only will Zool test all of these changes together um, and try to merge them all at once, but, 
Garrett will also internally enforce that atomicity so that all of the, um, like Garrett will either merge all of those changes at once or not at all. Um, so it's actually kind of neat to see that, uh, that support in both the CI system as well as uh, the code review system and the, see them working together on that. Um, so where does Zool do its work? Um, it, uh, it's, it's kind of agnostic about that uh, as well. Uh, it's not tied to any one cloud provider or any one way of running work. Um, you can run Zool jobs on virtual machines. So we, we support OpenStack, AWS, Google, Azure, IBM, um, or you can run your workloads on uh, Kubernetes or OpenShift, or you can run them on static nodes. So those could be just um, pieces of real hardware that you SSH into. Maybe, maybe those are proxies that, that are used for testing um, uh, other kinds of real hardware, you know, maybe you hook that up to to actual devices that you burn burn um, firmware onto, things like that. Um, all of that is uh, is possible with Zool, and Zool doesn't really care where you run those things on. Um, this is all fairly pluggable, and uh, and um, and and so we we support a bunch of different environments. Um, in uh, I, I haven't talked about this much yet, and I'll talk about it a little bit more, but um, we run a, a Zool for, um, that is used by the OpenStack project. It's used by the Zool project itself, and any other open infrastructure projects are, are welcome to use it as well. Um, we run that in what we call the OpenDev Collaboratory. Um, and that's basically a volunteer-run organization that uh, that runs uh, Garrett and Zool and a bunch of other things to to help open infrastructure to help open infrastructure projects with their um, with their development. And inside of OpenDev, um, we because it came out of the OpenStack environment, OpenStack is the only cloud environment that we use. However, we use um, something like six different OpenStack clouds. So um, we actually we treat this as a multi-cloud uh, application. And if, if, for example, one of our cloud providers goes down, that's fine. We don't care. We'll just use nodes from a different cloud provider. Uh, and I have, um, I work with companies that are using Zool internally that, for instance, run uh, both AWS and Azure, right? So if, if there's a problem with AWS, um, then they'll fall back on using nodes from Azure or, or something like that. Um, or maybe they can get a certain amount of, of, of cheap resources from one cloud provider or one cloud region. Uh, and if those aren't available, they'll use more expensive resources from a different one. Um, all of these things are, are possible. Um, Zool supports multi-node jobs natively. Uh, this is another feature that came out of uh, needing to, to solve OpenStack problems. Um, because when you deploy OpenStack, um, you're, you're, you're deploying them on different nodes. You know, you, there might be a compute node and a controller node or things like that. Or of course you can imagine in a Kubernetes environment, maybe you need to, to deploy Kubernetes on three different nodes, something like that. Um, the, we, we, we designed Zool to support these, uh, these multi-job, multi-node jobs natively. So you can say, when you run this job, you're going to need two different virtual machines. Uh, one of them is a, is a controller, um, which is going to be the, you know, the cloud controller, uh, and then the other end is just going to be a compute node, and uh, and we'll test OpenStack on on both of those. And the way, so so when we when we we're uh, designing the current version of Zool, we said, well, we're going to need a way to to say run this task on the compute node, and then run this task on the controller node. And instead of inventing a new way of doing that, we said, oh, there's already a system out there that lets you um, uh, designate certain tasks to run on certain nodes. Uh, it's called Ansible. So the way Zool's jobs are written is just by writing Ansible playbooks. So uh, a Zool jobs playbook might look like what you see on the screen here, where you say, on the controller node, run a bunch of tasks to set up the controller. Then on the compute node, run a bunch of different tasks to set up the compute node. 
Um, so I'm going to work, uh, uh, walk you through a quick example here. Um, and this is a, a real world example of how we use Zool in the OpenDev collaboratory. And so this is a little bit different. I've, I've kind of talked about um, using Zool for software development. Um, this is actually using Zool for infrastructure deployment. So one of the things that we do in the OpenDev collaboratory is uh, we, we are all in on the whole GitOps software uh, um, infrastructure as code kind of thing. Um, so all of our deployment is completely dr driven out of Ansible playbooks in Git repos. So if we want to deploy a Grafana server, um, we have a job, we have a Zool job that runs that um, and, uh, and, and actually deploys the server with, with Ansible playbooks. Um, we have two versions of this job. We have one that, 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 that does it for real on our actual production server. And then we have um, a version that runs the same playbooks, um, but in an ephemeral test environment. So this gets us to the point where somebody can propose, like if somebody wants to upgrade Grafana, right? They can propose a change that bumps the Grafana version and Zool will run its playbook uh, on, it'll spin up a, a test node um, from an OpenStack cloud. It'll run the deployment playbook on that test node, and we'll actually see the, the system uh, running before we merge the change to deploy it. So um, these are, uh, um, this is basically everything that we need to do to deploy a, a Grafana uh, service. We have a, a base playbook that we run on all of our nodes, does things like set up firewall rules, things like that. We have a Grafana playbook that, that actually does the Grafana deployment. Um, we have an inventory file, which in production is our real inventory file. Um, if we're doing the test job, then it's, it's, uh, an inventory file that just contains the ephemeral, um, node that Zool retrieved for us. Um, we have a bastion host, uh, we have our service host, um, and then, um, we have Ansible configuration. So, um, this is. The, this is what a Zool job configuration looks like. It's all in YAML. So if if we went to the actual Git repository, it would it would look like this, but be a little bit longer. Um, but we're basically saying that uh, to to run this um, Grafana deployment, um, we we have a job whose name is System Config Run Grafana. Um, before we run this job, uh, we need to make sure that we have. There's a different job that builds the container image, so we need to make sure that that we have that. Uh, in place. Um, there are two Git repos involved in this. There's um, the system config repo, which is where we, this is the one um, where we actually have our deployment playbooks and things like that. We also have a project config repository that has things like, um, that actually has our Grafana dashboard definitions because we drive those out of Git as well. And so to do a full deployment, we need both the definition for how to deploy the server and how to set up the dashboards in it. So this tells Zool that both of those projects are involved and it needs to check out both of them when it runs this job. Um, when we do the, the test deployment, we're going to um, request a, um, a Bastion node um, as well as our um, actual Grafana node. So we get two nodes from node pool um, and Zool is going to use both of those when we run the jobs. And then finally, um, we run a series of playbooks. So um, we are going to run the Let's Encrypt playbook, which we, we uh, run on every service where we have um, SSL certs, because we get all of our certs from Let's Encrypt. And then we're going to run the um, Grafana deployment playbook. And then finally, uh, since this is the test job, we're going to run a, a playbook after that. So this is after the end of the production deployment, where we run basically some functional tests on the system. So um, we use test in for, for that. So we're gonna we're gonna run some tests that um, verify that the service is up, that it returns appropriate data, things like that. Um, as well as um, this is a neat thing, it's gonna get some screenshots so that uh, developers looking at changes can actually look at the Grafana dashboard and say, oh yeah, that looks right. So um, the, 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 the test run for this um, sets up 
sets up our hosts, sets up our test mirrors, things like that. Um, we we translate our Zool inventory into an Ansible inventory that we use for the, the nested Ansible that we run um, because we're doing an Ansible deployment. Um, then we run uh, a series of playbooks that I that I just discussed uh, on the previous slide. Um, and oh, I, I actually, I just already told you this, sorry. So this is what the test playbook does. Um, checks the ports are listening, does some HTTP queries and captures screenshots and logs. So um, let's say somebody is, uh, you know, uploaded a change to, to, to do this. Um, this is what the result looks like in Zool. So if you actually go to Zool's web interface, you'll see that this, this job ran. And these are actual screenshots, by the way, because this is a real job. Um, so um, uh, this is sort of the summary screen showing you that the job ran and it was successful. Um, if we go down and look at the task summary, we can see that we ran 226 tasks on our fake Bastion servers. Uh, and 117 tasks on our Grafana service. Um, and uh, over here on the console tab, you can get an idea of um, sort of Zool showing you um, uh, what's going on at an individual task level. So, so what you're seeing now is uh, at the top of the screen, um, a bunch of playbooks that Zool ran. And uh, one of those is this um, run base playbook that I mentioned. And if you expand that, you can see the individual tasks that were run. Um, so we, on our Bastion host, we install Ansible. Um, so this is, this is running the individual tasks to install Ansible on the Bastion host. And you can drill down even more on that if you want to. Um, at the end of the job, we collect a bunch of logs. So we've got logs from the Bastion host. We've got logs from the Grafana service. Um, we run Grafana in containers using Docker Compose. So we've got all of the Docker logs in there. We've got a copy of syslog and things like that. So if anything goes wrong with this deployment, um, we can, we've got all of the logs there uh, that we can just go ahead and take a look at. And then we collect a bunch of artifacts as well. So um, we generate an ARA report. We have the results from running test inf infra uh, and then the, the screenshots. And uh, so here's the ARA report. So this is going to be the report from the nested Ansible run. Um, the test results, uh, sorry, the test infra results. And here's a screenshot um, where the job basically just used Selenium to, uh, to run a browser against our, our test Grafana system and take a screenshot of it. And then, um, since we did all of that work to, to have this ephemeral test job, um, we can build our actual production job based on that. And, uh, and it's, it's, uh, it's quite thin. It's actually a lot shorter. It's, again, if you looked at this in the repo, it would be a little bit longer than this. But this is uh, um, all, all that you really need to do is, is just change the, the playbook that you run. Uh, so this runs the same playbook that our test job did. Um, it just does it against the actual inventory instead of the fake inventory. And then it doesn't run the, the validation uh, jobs at the end. Um, so uh, one last uh, word here about um, Zool's architecture. I haven't talked very much about it, um, but I don't think we need to. I think it's just important to know that Zool is a highly scalable system. So there are no single points of failure in Zool. Um, and uh, you can scale out any of these components in Zool um, horizontally, depending on your on your needs and, and the load that you're doing. Uh, OpenDev runs two schedulers, two web servers, 12 executors. Executors are the, the component that's responsible for running jobs. Six mergers, um, those are responsible for, for just doing Git merge operations. Um, and uh, so that's a, that's a pretty good size system. It's not the largest Zool system out there, but it's a, it's a decent size. Um, and uh, we continuously upgrade Zool, or at least almost continuously. Right now we're in open dev. Um, we, we upgrade Zool uh, to the latest commit uh, on master once a week. 
um, no matter what that is. Um, basically, we're we're so confident in our testing that we don't we don't really we don't schedule upgrades. They just happen on Friday nights. Um, so um, we'd actually like to make that a little more frequent. Uh, the only problem is is that doing a rolling restart of the executors um, takes something like 24 to 48 hours if, uh, if the system is busy. So um, we're not sure that we want to sort of commit to, to always being in the middle of an upgrade. Um, so right now doing a, doing a weekly automated upgrade is our, is our happy medium. Um, but, but generally speaking, we, we upgrade, um, we, we can upgrade continuously and, and we do it without any downtime because all of these, um, services are um, redundant. So um, if you'd like to learn more about Zool, that's the link to our project page. And if you'd like to learn more about Acme Gating, there's uh, my web address. Um, there's on the, on the Zool project page, there's links to our mailing list and our matrix chat and uh, the source code, of course, and, and things like that, uh, documentation, all that. So that's sort of what I have here for slides. Um, I'm going to uh, stop and see if there's any questions. Um, and uh, yeah. Um, I had a question. Um, I'm not sure if it really was covered because I was I kind of flipped back and forth when you were going over the actual screenshots. However, is there an actual a visual um, like feedback chain, uh, workflow chain that you kind of get in a lot of the, like um, um, Argo CD, I think has it, you know, like, you know, where it shows the actual visual reference to where things are sitting and you can like click on those icons and it becomes basically like a little, you know, pop-up command or you can do stuff with it. You, do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Um, so we, we do have, uh, let me share the screen again. Um, And I'm going to start by, oh, you know, I should actually let me do this. I'm going to share this tab. Um, so we do have um, some 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 tools to help. Uh, developers sort of visualize what's going on with Zool. Um, the, there isn't an exact analog to say what you'd see in Argo CD, um, partly because the, the, the constructs are a little bit different in Zool. Um, the way that you build Zool pipelines is, uh, is a little bit different. Uh, you, you can do everything that you can do in Argo CD and Zool, you just do it differently. And so the visualizations are, are, are a little bit different. Um, so I'm going to show I have no idea what this is going to look like, but okay, looks like we're fairly busy. So this is um, this is the uh, this is Zool's own Zool, um, uh, but I'm actually showing the OpenStack tenant because it tends to be a little bit busier. So um, this is um, what's happening in the OpenStack project right now. So these are um, if you actually if you think back to my slide. Um, remember, I, I, I had some circles that were sort of connected to each other. Um, that is that is a direct correlation to what you see here on the screen, right? So um, right now, um, let's see. There's weirdly um, there's there's uh, there's nothing going on with. Uh, the OpenStack project itself. It's all the ancillary projects right now. Um, um, but like there's a, there's a queue for OpenStack Ansible. Um, there's another queue for a different part of OpenStack Ansible. Um, yeah, so, so these are basically different these are different independent queues of of groups of projects, um, and these are the changes that are are lined up to be merged, right? So this is, if we look at this sort of set of uh, three changes right here, um, these are three changes that are lined up to be merged in the OpenStack Ansible OS Neutron project. Um, 
and uh, an, within each of those changes, we're running a bunch of Zool jobs. Um, so there's a whole bunch of jobs that are running just for that first change, and then a whole bunch of jobs for the second change, and 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 that that sort of thing, right? Um, so that's how you can sort of visualize um, the different changes that are in flight and the relationship between each other. Um, but the thing that you see in Argo CD, because it's usually not focused on more than one change at a time, um, and, and again, this is good, goes back to one of those different differences between different CI CD systems and Zool. Um, uh, a lot of systems don't have this visualization because they don't have the idea of multiple changes sort of lined up in different queues to different projects and being dependent on each other and that sort of thing. Um, so, so this is how we visualize that. In, in Argo CD, um, you're going to be more focused on uh, how do you uh, build, uh, you know, build and deploy this particular component of the system? How does that relate to other components of the system? And that's actually a little bit, the mapping isn't one-to-one, -one, but it, in Zool, that's a little bit more like the relationship between, uh, between jobs for a single change, right? So um, this, this isn't a great example that I've selected at random because this is mostly just testing one thing on a bunch of different platforms. Um, but you could imagine that this is actually um, a, um, do we actually have a, we don't have, um, I was hoping we might have a, oh, right. So, um, going back to open dev and my example from earlier, uh, this is, this is an actual production, uh, deployment job. This is a job that updates Zool itself, as it turns out. Uh, as well as a few other things. Our eavesdrop service, for some random reason, is also uh, uh, connected there. So this is um, updating uh, several different production systems um, at once, right? So so we've got, um, uh, we need to bootstrap our, our Bastion service. Uh, update anything on the Bastion service, and then we're going to update Zool and our our container registry and node pool and the and then the eavesdrop service, right? So this is this is um, uh, inside of a single queue item. This is a bunch of different components that have a relationship to each other, and so the way that we um, define the way that we deal with that in Zool is um, we construct jobs for each of those components, and then we express the relationship between those jobs. So if I were to um, go to, let's say, see if I can find it here. Um, oops. I look at this system config project and, and I say, what happens when somebody proposes a, so when somebody proposes a change to the master branch of the system config project, um, this is the complete set of jobs that might run. Um, and this is um, one of, one, not actually the largest graph that I've seen of this type, but one of the larger ones. Um, and this graph is basically what I was asking about, but I don't see yeah. how, it, but it's so complex. I don't think it would be used in the same way that, that cause the, the specific graph I was picturing, um, mm -hmm. uh, cause I had touched Argus CD in, in a CD in a couple of months, but basically I was start looking for that, that piece that actually shows like, as you're showing here, um, you know, state, oh, the stages, you know, the stage yep. graph, like where mm -hmm. it's basically, you know, like stage one is complete, you know, whatever you name it. So, you know, if you have, you know, adamant, um, uh, you know, Q, QA testing or whatever, whatever you have, it's listed in there in that stage and then it's moving through the stages and you can click on it to see what happened. So it looks yeah. similar to this, but it's, it's, it's not as complex because there's not a fucking one on, but go ahead. Yeah. Yep. Um, so, so yeah, it, definitely reading this requires you know, knowledge of the system uh, that, that that you're working with, right? Um, so, but just as a high level, 
these are a bunch of jobs that are basically completely independent. They don't rely on anything else in the system. And so they can just run on their own. Um, the, these jobs over here on the right, they all have some kind of relationship with each other, right? So in order to, um, like this one over here on the right um, is system config run review. Uh, that basically means run our Garrett server. Um, and so in order to run our Garrett server, we might need to build a Garrett image. And in order to build a Garrett image, we might need a Garrett base image. And in order to build our Garrett gate base image, we might need, we're, we're definitely going to need uh, our container registry, right? So, so it's, it, it's not exactly the same thing um, that you see in Argo, but it, it's similar in spirit in that. Um, yes. You know, these are the... That last part you just said, it's like, okay, well, that's, it's like, it's like um, what we usually see in CICD on steroids, because, you know, you're literally going back to looking for an image. You're not just looking in a registry. If there is an image, you're actually, you have it in there um, mm -hmm. in your, I guess, infrastructure as code or whatever to look, to see, Hey, do we even have, do we need to build an image and go build it? You know, this, this is pretty interesting. Exactly. Yeah, and that's actually why this is a dashed line because maybe we don't need to build that image, and and there are Zool is configured in such a way it's that that it might decide that it doesn't need to build that image, in which case it can skip that uh, that dependency. So, um, so yeah, it's it, it, and and really the reason why this doesn't look exactly like the Argo CD is is because like there isn't the the way of like I said, you can accomplish the same things, but the way you accomplish them is is different enough, and uh, the way you think about the problem is different enough that it's not going to look it's not going to look the same because you don't express the 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 way of doing it in the same way. So there isn't like you, you can't write a script that translates Argo CD um, configuration syntax to Zool syntax because you kind of have to rethink the problem uh, in, in Zool's way of thinking about it versus Argo's way of thinking about it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, if nobody else has questions, um, Johannes, please, <laughs> stage is yours. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, the same goes for me. I mean, uh, if there are, if there is a question, uh, it's easier. And then I uh, just interrupt any time. Now I will try to see if I can get this to work. Share. So can you see this? Yes. Great. Yes, so the uh, obvious uh, thing for us uh, at Volvo Cars, why we have chosen Zool is uh, we don't want to merge broken code. And, and James has gone through quite in detail of, of how that works. Uh, yeah, so I have a, a, a pipeline here that shows the sum of the uh, backgrounds. Uh, the history of when we started to uh, use it. So we started, yeah, it seems to, time flies, it's nine years <laughs> ago um, where we, we started on a small scale and we started using uh, Zool version two, 2018. And uh, in, on that version, it used, uh, used Jenkins as a job execution. Uh, manager and at 2019 we deployed Zool version 3 which uses Ansible in the way that James has described um, and I will come later in a, in a bit later why we, we made this choice because uh, people were used to Jenkins and Ansible is not is, is hard for, for some people yeah, uh, 2021, we won the, uh, something called the Tech Awards inside Volvo Cars. And this was really nice because developers voted for this. It was the first time you could vote and developers just, you know, showed their appreciation and voted. So we won that that year. And since then, we have uh, 
scaled up and we are continuously uh, scaling up our Zool deployments. And this slide here is quite recent. Uh, it shows the same uh, web uh, GUI uh, that James showed. Um, and this shows our current tenants. And as I think is very common, we have uh, something called VCC, Volvo Cars tenant. This is the largest. So uh, we try to separate uh, projects into different tenants because then uh, you know um, they get faster performance, but uh, sometimes it's not uh, possible. And here, um, yeah, we can see that we run uh, all the electric car central components and easy use of the car. They have their own tenants. And then we have the uh, VCC tenant, which is our, basically our ADADAS computer, uh, which is the largest one. Um, and then we have uh, special tenants for logical simulations and a tenant for uh, SUL. And then I think we have, have an old legacy tenant here added with the just recently. So I, I think I start with some statistics. <laughs> I don't know if that's interesting or not, but um, these are uh, fresh uh, figures from, um, yeah, re recent figures. And this shows uh, the top uh, graph here shows uh, Gary Patchett's. Uh, we, we do have uh, GitLab connected also, but the majority uh, of the uh, software changes proposed to Zool is from Garrett. And it's also something we selected for our future that we want to focus on on Garrett. And yeah, it's it's not the biggest Zool uh, deployment I have heard of or looked at on on YouTube, but it's it's, uh, it's starting to get a bit serious. Um, here we see the uh, Zool pipelines, or yeah, what we James showed in the Zool web. And here one can see that we have something here in the VCC tenant, we have the checks jobs. And uh, when you push a change to Garrett, we will automatically run check pipelines. And that's the largest majority each day uh, of, of yeah, the pipeline we run. And then the amount of jobs, uh, is, I think last year we peaked at 10,000 for most, and now we, I think we have an average of 15,000. So it's growing rapidly and it's go, growing all the time. I was, when I looked at this in the beginning of the year, I, I didn't have time to look at it, but then we, we had to go through our backend and say, oh, we are, we're growing now. We have to make sure we can handle it. So it's, more and more, but as, as also we heard before, Zool um, is scalable and, and we have known that we, we started much smaller and we have been growing all the time and we, we, we think that we can grow way past these uh, figures also. Well, of course, we need to make sure that we, we don't have bottlenecks in the infrastructure backend. Uh, and that's something we, talk with James about, you know, when 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 we see a certain scale and we we you know we, we look at the different components and the hardware behind it and just make sure it can handle the increased load. This is uh, from the Grafana that you get out of Zool out of the box. And here we can see this is a typical day. Uh, so I think last time I presented this, we were like around four or 500 nodes in parallel. And now we, yeah, we mostly use uh, Amazon nodes at the moment. And uh, yeah, we almost hit uh, K uh, of dynamic EC2 nodes. So we, we have a, I think we have an Azure account here. Yeah, so yeah, not so much, but we, we do use, uh, we have Azure and AVS. Uh, providers and of course some bare metal nodes. We have a few of these odd rigs connected, 
and a few odd uh, uh, bare metal computers, but they are, I think they're added on, on, on this top here. So there are very few of them that we run. Uh, yeah, and we have a central team uh, or two teams actually uh, that focus on Seoul, uh, 17 people. Uh, in total, and then we have uh, three people in propulsion who work with their tenants. They are, yeah, they're self, like, self-governed or and self, you know, they they mind their own business and they just talk to us when there are issues, basically. And then we have also a small small Rust-based tenant, and they they are also do, minding their own. Uh, business. And we have a, a support contract with uh, James for Acme Gating. Uh, and, and this helps us uh, a lot. Uh, I mean, uh, having the founder of an open source project, you know, as a, as a support to help us out, especially when we're stressed and we, we, we're trying to solve operations or, or other issues. It's great to have this uh, operation and I added a few two other companies here. Uh, one is our uh, fully owned uh, Volvo cars company, Sansact. They do the sensor fusion parts of the ADA does and they also use uh, Zool with an OpenShift uh, deployment. And then we have uh, Arobay, which is a, a rather new company that handles our legacy of uh, emission uh, like petrol and diesel engines, which we uh, have uh, branched off, and we we have a plan in Volvo Cars to to just go electric quite soon. So we, but they have a they have a, also their own uh, Zoo So it's even though, yeah, it's there are some automotive involved uh, companies using Zoo. Yes, and uh, we we like to. Uh, I mean, we we like to uh, participate as much as we can into the community, into the uh, live chats and and whatever. Um, we like the openness and the collaboration, uh, you know, uh, of of the project and of the both open infra and the Zool uh, project itself. It's very nice to see, you know, anyone comes from the public and ask questions and they get excellent support, you know, everyone gets first class support and it's really, it's really nice to just, you know, see the live chat logs and the, uh, see how the, the community, you know, the mentality of the community and how it participates. And I think this is, for us, it's really important. It's something we're trying to increase because it's um, it, it's actually fostering a very good developer environment where where developers can join. There, I mean, for us, they're free to uh, contribute to the, the project itself if they like. Uh, and and uh, we have seen that when when our developers do, it's very, very good for their uh, learning and their uh, development as as uh, developers basically. So we, we we actively encourage this, um, and we really also appreciate the um, the truly open source paradigm where you use an open source ecosystem and you man and uh, how that is is managed. It's it's I think personally very interesting to see, you know how how this is operated. And uh, how you can use a, an open source ecosystem for for something as complex as as, as OpenStack and 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 Zool together. Um, this is really exciting. Our own uh, uh, setup. Uh, we we have six schedulers, twenty executors, and ten web pops, pods at the moment, and we are working on <laughs> auto scaling. Uh, so far, we just. Uh, like panic scaled, I could say. <laughs> when we had a burst somewhere, we just scale it up and let it be like that, you know. Oh, so now we can handle it. We know we can handle handle 
So, but we are we are wor currently working on setting up uh, out to scaling. Um, and the uh, back end of Zool runs in an ATS uh, cluster. So it's, it's yeah, it's, I think it's going to work to have it out of scaling, basically, based on certain parameters or, or load parameters. But this is the size we run today. And then I think we, here I have some material that touches on what James has said. I start with a few just text-based uh, things um, uh, that we can we can we can make some changes to a set of repositories, and we can merge those mono monotonically. Um, monotonically uh, and we can test each change with the current states of all the repositories before we merge and this is this is really a crucial feature and I will show this graphically in, uh, in some slides um, and here we have the the complex situation with the co-gating uh, that we can make sure that we run all relevant tests for a, a complex set of a distributed change across repositories. And for us, they, I mean, if we have add a computer to our car and we think this is an importer node, we'll have a lot of software developed. The first step for us is to establish just a, a connection between Zool and repository. And then when we have that, and uh, if we we try we group it together with other nodes of the car, or which means other Garrett uh, projects, and that means that the developer can write in the Garrett commit message depends on, and I here I just wrote another Garrett change in another node repo. And this, what this does is emulating in a way a mono repo. In, in a CI system. So even though we there can be many different Garrett instances, developers can push changes that depend on each other, but they are in different code bases, but they have a clear interaction. They can push changes in both and just with a commit message say, I depend on this change. And then Zool will carry it through the checking gate pipelines. And this is a, yeah, I try to be <laughs> the art director in me or whatever, tries to make a picture of this, uh, trying to explain how how this works. And uh, here I have, I have edited out a bit of information, but uh, so basically here we we can see that we have we have changes that can depend on other changes. So. If we have, if you look at the car here, and this is a yeah, one architecture used in the industry, the Sonal architecture, functionality will be distributed, uh, you know, among these compute nodes, and and this is the reason we choose, especially so, choose Zool version three, because here you have the depends on functionality, so you can you can have changes that are in different computers in the car and they might be in different repos and but you still need to develop functionality that holds together and with Zool you can do this it's very easy you just write a message and there you go and if you have a lot of developers and you have a like a the car of today is a complex data center with a lot, lot of large computers with a lot of communication in between and you can have thousands of developers. You, this is like, we just saw that we, we need, our product is, is complex. And when we looked around you know, OpenStack, they, they were a public repository, we could look at their soup pipelines and how they work. And they also have that. They have an even more complex ecosystem where they build things on each other and they, they distribute, they build different things of di different Lego pieces. 
and we saw that with this data center on wheels, uh, we 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 really need we need gating basically uh, to ensure our our speed, uh, and we need this depends on on feature, and that's um, the reason basically the reason that we uh, choose uh, Sud, and that's the very powerful feature that it does have. And uh, let me see, I have a picture here of this. I can maybe look at this. And, and here, uh, I mean, for this to work, and, and it, this is very interesting, I think, because we, we actually can only, we can look at the open source, uh, the open dev tenant. And we, uh, there we can see, uh, you know, so basically you need, you need this complex gating mechanism, but you also need another thing and that's uh, tests. So we need, we need to, we see that we need to have, ideally we want to have you know, cloud-based uh, tests running for these nodes. Sometimes it's possible, uh, you know, to abstract the way of it. And we, uh, we recently use these Graviton nodes, ARM-based nodes, and they, they, we can run the same binaries as we have in the car on these ones. That's extremely powerful because then, Basically, we we can have run virtualized tests that actually translates very well to the real uh, computers of the car. And this is the other component that is really needed. If you have if you have good tests for all these different nodes, um, then you really you really can handle uh, you know uh, gating with a complex system and solve the dependencies uh, between a complex system. And here we see yeah, just an enlargement here of some of the uh, nodes of the car with, and I put uh, yeah, some cloud computers on top of them. This is a very um, uh, detailed <laughs> picture a lot of a lot of information in this one um, and, uh, this shows our uh, our current state uh, of what we have today so basically this is a simplified um, picture of showing the the flow of different kind of commits uh, and how they translate to the check and gate and release deploy pipelines of, of Zool. And this is also here at this, at the moment we have a like a manifest for our car in GitLab, and that's why it says merge request checking gate. So they're also running in Zool. So they have their own uh, pipelines. So uh, yeah, and this is currently we are working on on changing uh, this, uh, but but at the moment it's uh, looking like this. And here is just a. Know, uh, I try to just put in some kind of jobs here, so uh, get an idea of uh, what does developer, what do they have in their pair pipelines. Um, I think we have we have some Python jobs, but we also have a lot of you know, Google tests. Uh, uh, yeah, we use Clang Tidy, Valgrind, uh, we use emulators uh, to run our code. Now we use some proprietary uh, linter tools seen here. Um, yeah, so and here we see, yeah, this is the manifests that were in the purple picture. And here we run other kind of like tests, full scale uh, tests of the system uh, because this is the, when 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 we merge a manifest, a car manifest, it means that they are actually available for being out sent out to to real cars. So here we have yeah, other kind of tests, more complex tests, and we also have these uh, hardware in the loop systems uh, that uh, run tests uh, on on the real target computers at times. 
So I won't go into details for that either. Yeah, oh, that was the, <laughs> that was a large uh, last uh, slide. Um, yeah. Uh, I lost track of time also, but I think this was quite brief, right? I hope. <laughs> actually, I have, I have a question. Um... Sure. So actually, do you use Zool to update vehicles in real time while they're driving? Mm, no, um, no, we we don't do that. Uh, we don't have Zool as a CD uh, system in 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 that way. Uh, we have, and it's, I mean, uh, it has a lot of do with security. Uh, so we. Uh, what we have is that we have a lot of, you know, some functionalities. Uh, they um, um, like, uh, let's take uh, drivability development that we had for years in, in Zool. Let's say you you wanna you wanna work with a software that uh, ha uh, handles how the car behaves, you know, on certain uh, speeds, like how when you push the pedal, how how will the car how will the torque be sent out to the inverters, you know, uh, giving the drivability feeling of, of the car? You know, that can't really be, you have to validate that in a real car. You, you, we don't, unfortunately, we don't have the high enough fidelity models. I mean, we have it in some parts, but not, in, not for drivability, unfortunately. So that needs to be tested on a car and preferably on a test track. We have a, a really big test track uh, outside of, of Gothenburg, and we have specialized developers. They you need know, to go to a course, and you, you you know you learn the security and everything. And these cars have a, like uh, they have like red buttons you can slam, you know, just kill the car, you know. But there, people just run the check job, and you know they do software download, uh, and that they develop like that and they actually you know they 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 push to get it and they get the binary and they flash it in the car you know yeah. and the so car really could... want... yeah, sorry yeah so they they, they do the it, it's not like zool is not uh it's not like the the car uh the, the is like a bare metal node and and there you know we have there is a labor and it will be downloaded it's not like that but they they get uh, in in the artifact page of the zool web they will get the artifact and and they use that and uh, and they have specialized some of them. I think we have a few teams that de really do a lot of in-vehicle testing for the systems and they have specialized uh, pipelines where they can just type and they get exactly what they need for the uh, test track uh, testing. So they get the images and, and a few other things. So they have like stripped down pipelines where they don't have everything of this. They have you know just what they need uh, the documentation, the diffs, the logs, and then just, you know, um, the, all the binaries they need uh, for the nodes they are testing. So it's a, we, we, yeah, we're not, we're not there that we do like a cannery or like, a, let's find a customer and, and shoot down. <laughs> it's also, it's also legally, you know, there are legal things on this and, um, uh, It's very complex, but so yeah, that's the, <laughs> I hope that's a, a, an answer. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, does any, if, does anybody has other questions? Um, okay, so uh, I think, uh, I think we can wrap up uh, this uh, meetup. Uh, I thank uh, James and Johannes a great deal. Uh, I'm really excited about this uh, first meetup. And um, everybody can, uh, I'll write my email down here. Everybody can uh, freely email me about anything. I think it's super exciting and interesting. Um, and thanks. Th thanks everybody. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you guys. Yeah. I was really, I was happy that, that um, I didn't realize it was going to be James 
And um, also, you know, a gentleman from Volvo talking about real world, like from a super duper company. I was, I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited. I was able to catch this. Great. Yeah, you're, you're welcome. I think it's, I mean, personally, I think James agrees. You know, if somebody wants to talk about Zool, you know, I just turn up. Uh, I've been to really odd, small events. You know, uh, I'm, I'm, I just like talking about Zool, you know, with anyone. And I don't care if it's, it's a huge mass or some conference center or it's a small meetup. You know, I, I, I really enjoy uh, talking about this because I think it's great things. <laughs> so, I'm always happy, definitely. you know, always uh, trying to make time uh, for these things. Yeah, that's it exactly. Yeah. Great. Great. Yeah. Uh, so I can stop the recording.